Hey guys, today on People Now, all the royals and celebrities who attended Princess Eugenie's star-studded wedding, we've got all the deets. Kara Knightley clears the air surrounding comments she made about Princess Kate. How A-list couple Ryan Gosling and Ava Mendez keep the mystery alive in their relationship. The latest on HGTV star Leanne Ford's pregnancy news. Plus, it's a family affair for Alex and Nat Wolf and their mom, Polly Draper, in their new movie. All the details today on People Now. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Welcome to People Now. We know you woke up super <laughs> early on this special day to watch Princess Eugenie marry Jack Brooksbank. And if you didn't wake up early, we've got you covered. But That's talk about a picture-perfect royal wedding. Indeed. And in celebration of the day, we want to know from you what you thought about the ceremony and what you love the most about royal weddings. So tweet us using the hashtag People Now, and you may see your response on the show. We'll check in on our uh, royal wedding reactions a little later. But now let's get into that ceremony. Take a quick look at this. The only unto him, so long as ye both shall live. I will. I will. It's official. Another royal <laughs> wedding in the history books. Princess Eugenie and Jack Brooksbank are married. The longtime couple tied the knot in a fairy tale ceremony in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle Friday. Here to break it all down for us is our royal correspondent, Imogen Lloyd Webber. So good to see you, Imogen. Thanks for being good here. Good to see you, of course. An it's exciting day. Very Absolutely. Yeah. Day. We love a royal wedding. That we do. do. <laughs> yeah. Let's dive right into it. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to know about Princess Eugenie's wedding dress. It was absolutely stunning. Tell us, give us all the deets. British based designer obviously very expected ever since Queen Victoria's time it's a tradition that royal brides wear British uh, Peter Pilotto and Christopher de Vos a gorgeous fitted bodice full pleated skirt now interestingly no veil and also a very low back never ever see that. that never ever see that on a royal bride now this is because uh, Princess Eugenie when she was 12 years old got operated on the scoliosis and she wanted to show off her scar wow. because she believed scars could be beautiful so actually that's a very touching thing to do and I think very inspirational yeah very Absolutely. intentional Absolutely. and and man she looks beautiful the dress is sure really gorgeous um, the yeah. train and everything incredible bling going on the Greville emerald Kokoschnik tiara which uh, was on loan from the Queen and those emerald uh, diamond earrings they were a gift from her husband on the wedding day wow, that's very so nice. sweet and they match her beautiful green eyes as well absolutely Stunning. gorgeous so also familiar territory here St. George's Chapel mm -hmm. at Windsor uh, Castle same venue of course where Harry and Meghan just recently yep. were, were married why'd they get married there Okay, so uh, St. George's Chapel is like the family church, um, and Princess Eugenie is only ninth in line to the throne, Prince Harry is only sixth. So the senior royals, they are all in London at Westminster Abbey, right. very epic venue. Um, but uh, these royals, no, they're at the, the, family, the family venue. And St. George's Chapel, like when you actually go, is very intimate. I was there for Harry and Meghan's wedding covering it. Um, and you go in, and it, it is this sort of wonderful family venue. So less, less, on, less it, big scale. And I will say, in the scale of my life, it's yes. still an epic it venue as well. Yes, I would say. So it was also a big day for Princess Eugenie's mother, mm -hmm. Sarah Ferguson. She looked divine. Yeah. How involved do you think the mother of the bride was in the ceremony? Oh, she was absolutely involved every step of the way. Very proud, was busy on social media when they got in being totally overexcited, perhaps a little bit too overexcited. Mm -hmm. I think everybody can relate to that. Yes. She looked great, was wearing a local designer, Emma Louise Design, and love this. She um, had a vintage uh, black, vintage Blahnik bag, oh, wow. um, okay. which her mum uh, took to her wedding back in 1986. Oh, that's her really mum, Susan Rand, sadly died many years ago now, but it was just a lovely touch, a way that uh, she got to bring her mother to the well, wedding. Well, leads, leads me to this. Uh, throwing it back to Fergie's wedding day, marrying Prince Andrew, um, were there any sort of things included that were special from her parents' wedding day that Eugenie included in her own as well. So actually, on the wedding dress itself, on Eugenie's wedding dress, um, she had uh, some sort of wonderful um, symbols, um, including uh, a shamrock for Ireland as a reflection of the bride's maternal family, the York Rose, um, as well as Ivy uh, representing um, the couple's home. Uh, Eugenie and Jack live at Ivy Cottage at Kensington Palace. So some really personal yeah, that pieces is. there. Yeah, yeah, that's very, very sweet. So a royal wedding is mm -hmm. not complete well without other royals. So let's take a look at who <laughs> Who is there? We have Kate Middleton, mm -hmm. Prince William, Prince Harry, Meghan Markle, and yes, Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip were also in attendance. Now, what role did they play today? Were they just guests at the wedding? They were all just guests and so relaxed and breaking shocking news here. What is it? We have to talk about William and Kate, the PDA that was
was going on. Look Imagine at this. Do oh, my gosh. So, Imogen, do you think they've been inspired by Harry and Meghan, perhaps? <laughs> Quite possibly, but they were holding hands during the service. This never happened. And his hand was on her back. I know, I know. I mean, just write up the stories now. Breaking uh, news, everybody. Actually, maybe, though, a larger story here. Prince Philip mm. in attendance. Why was this a surprise? So he's 97 years old, so he's always going to decide on the day. But here's the thing. He does not get on with Sarah Ferguson at all. There was a big falling out uh, when she divorced Prince Andrew uh, many years ago now. Now, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson get on well. Mm -hmm. uh, Sarah Ferguson and the Queen get on well. Mm -hmm. Prince Philip does not like her at all, refuses to be in the same room. So it was sort of a big deal, but he was there for his granddaughter. Yeah, That's sweet. I'm usually. sure Eugenie was smart not yeah. to sit them together. <laughs> all right, so the guests... Yeah, yeah we're so go back to let's Harry go back to Harry and Megan Meghan really quickly. We can't get enough of them. Look at that beautiful dress. So M M Megan is wearing... Uh, Claire, White, Claire White Keller from Givenchy, her go-to designer. And interestingly, mm -hmm. Kate was wearing um, Alexander McQueen, her go-to designer. So they were wearing their wedding dress designers uh, in their outfits today. You yeah. know what I find? I find that Megan sometimes wears like muted colors. Would you say that she loves doing that during the wedding? I think also she didn't want the spotlight on her today. Right. They were in the side door, these senior mm -hmm. royals. They weren't going around the front entrance. They absolutely wanted the spotlight to be um, on Princess Eugenie. Makes a lot of sense. Now the guests that always steal the show are the littlest royals. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think Prince George and Princess Charlotte are wedding pros at this point? I think they probably are. But look <laughs> at that wave, Charlotte. Oh, just gorgeous, <laughs> a wave at the wave. Oh, I mean, she's so good at this now. Lots of wind, a little dangerous there <laughs> yeah. for everyone involved. But she's still got it. She knows how to navigate those those winds. And George looks like he's coming out of his shell a little bit, so that's wonderful to see. No I mean, Prince Louis, there. though. No Prince Louis in sight. He's of course, too, too young. Okay, Jeremy. I'm just saying I'm keeping an eye out for the Honestly. Louis. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly. Yes. One moment everyone is talking about, though, is when this adorable little page where we saw a little bit of it there, but when he took a yeah. tumble. That's another Louis. Louis going, de Jorgey, yes, yeah, coming up yeah, the stairs. So here we go. Here there he goes. It is. Okay, so he steps up, and oh, wait a minute. Oh, there's wait. the wind. <laughs> but look at how quickly he bounces back. Well, they're little at that point. There's less far to fall, isn't there? But no, it's the wind was crazy. Hats were flying. All just Skirts were, all, were blowing. Skirts I mean, that was were blowing up. Yeah. So it was oh, look at this. There we go. Fascinators you know were need? blowing up. You need some pins to hold that down, right? Yeah. Because if that wind is going, there you go. You well, can't the, mess up a picture perfect moment. The, fascina the fascinators would be tough to keep in place on a normal day, much less. <laughs> that Indeed, windy. on a windy day. Now, along with the royals, there were a slew mm. of celebrity guests from Cara Delevingne, Liv Tyler to Kate Moss. I'm assuming all these big names are close, intimate friends of the couple. Absolutely. Eugenie actually lived in New York for a while, very international, knows all these celebs. Ricky Martin was there, Liv Tyler. Um, but interestingly, in, it was going to be a little bit awkward, perhaps, at the reception, because Prince Harry's two big ex-girlfriends, uh, Cresta Bonus and Chelsea Davy, were both in attendance. Wow. What is that conversation? Um, so we'll see how that goes. Eugenie and Harry yeah. are very, very, very close. Mm -hmm. um, she obviously kept in touch with his exes. Right. Um, so I don't even so, know the, how that's well, going So they'll now. probably show up because the rest of the day is very busy. What's the agenda? Very busy. So um, there are three parties. I mean, you know, there's a lot, lot going on. A lot, a lot going parties. on over there, yeah. Um, so yes, the Queen is hosting a champagne reception at Windsor Castle. So that's basically for everybody. Uh, then this evening, 400 people are going to a party hosted um, by uh, Prince Andrew and Sarah Ferguson at Royal Lodge, which is Prince Andrew's home. And then tomorrow, there's sort of like a hangover day. Nice. <laughs> there's going to be fairground wheels. There's sort of going to be Bloody Mary. Wow. A little Sounds bit like more relaxed. Just starting off. Well, uh, Imogen, thank you so much for joining us. That was a great recap. Yeah. Well, it's good to see you both. Good to yeah. see you too. Can't wait to find out about those parties mm -hmm. in the aftermath. All right, guys, uh, let's move on to this. Kira Knightley is responding to claims that she shamed Kate Middleton in a recent essay over setting unrealistic expectations for new mothers. Kate Middleton has dazzled fans three times over with her polished appearances outside the hospital just hours after giving birth. Knightley recalled in her essay titled The Weaker Sex how different her own experience was, implying that Kate's appearances hid the battle women go through during childbirth. Now, Kiera made sure to set the record straight at the premiere of her new film, Colette, insisting that her words were misrepresented by the media, saying, quote, I would suggest to those people in the media that they reread the entirety of the essay and not just take one bit out of it, because the comments that I made are completely about our culture that's silences women's truths and forces us all to hide, and I absolutely did not shame anybody in any way. In fact, quite the opposite. Kira's own daughter with husband James Wright and Edie just turned three, and the Colette actress opened up to people about how important it is to her to balance motherhood and her career. Kira asked for production on her new movie Colette to be postponed because Edie was so young that she would have been too tired to learn her lines, and they sweetly obliged. Edie doesn't seem to be phased by her famous mom's job as an actress. Kira says, quote, I think she thinks that everybody's mom is in pictures. <laughs> Edie has hit a milestone of her own, her very first curse word. That's right after almost being in a little, I guess a little bit of a car crash. The little girl asked her daddy, hey, 
Is that when you say bleep? <laughs> he must have let something out of the bag there. So yeah, I'm sure they laughed about that. And they're always listening. Yes, these they kids. are. Ryan Gosling and Eva Mendes are one of Hollywood's most mysterious A-list couples, and they want to keep it that way. So in this week's People, a source says the two quote love and respect each other and try to give each other space to pursue what they love. Now the two were first linked back in September of 2011 after a PDA filled date at where else? Disneyland. After <laughs> as meeting, you do. As you do, right? After meeting on the set of their film. The Place Beyond the Pines, but both refused to talk about their relationship at the time. And now, seven years later, both are still exceptionally private about their love, but that seems to be working out for them just fine for them. An entertainment um, source tells people that Gosling loves how fiercely independent Mendes is, though it can be sometimes, quote, challenging. But the one thing they always agree on is how much they love being parents to their two daughters. Another source adds that they are both in love with being parents and can't get enough of it. Now, neither wants to slow down on work interests, but every day is juggling act to be with their daughters. Gosling's latest film, First Man, comes out in theaters, theaters this weekend. Super excited about that. Cannot wait for that movie. All right, listen this guys Amazon is now offering a monthly Oreo subscription they are Jimmy let me tell you service. more about it yeah. it is super exciting the Oreo subs subscription club service where you can get milk's favorite cookie delivered to your door that's right to your door now each delivery comes in a stylish dark blue gift box and holds not one but two boxes <laughs> of Oreo flavors a special gift and a recipe it's card it's the best thing I've ever heard of truly right and if your sweet tooth just isn't enough is strong enough to sign up for a year's worth of Oreos don't worry you can get subscriptions for three, six, or 12 months. So the Oreo subscription costs the ranging from 60 to $240. It's a small price to pay, really. And I know for a lot of joy, but unfortunately it does not include a tall glass of milk. Sign me up. All right, guys, we've got all the cutest babies of Instagram. That's right, like Blake and Adam's bromantic smooch. Plus, are Pete and Ariana getting a prenup? It's all in this week's People Star Tracks recap. Here comes the bride. And a prenup. Ariana Grande and Pete Davidson are very close to finalizing their prenuptial agreement. An agreement Pete fully approves. Joking with SNL's Colin Jost, it was a footwear necessity. Well, obviously, I wanted one, you know, so God forbid, <laughs> God forbid we split up and she takes half my sneakers. Ariana's worth about $50 million from tours, album sales, endorsement deals, where Pete Davidson is worth about $2 million. And not being the breadwinner apparently comes with some perks. I live at her place, you know? <laughs> she pays like 60 grand for rent and all I have to do is like stock the fridge. A fully stocked fridge and a wedding next year? What's not to love? Let me I just, just paint Adam a Levine. picture. Let me paint a picture. I just First kissed Adam all, Levine. Say what? The Voices resident bromance just went up an octave. You're getting a kiss for that. You're getting a Wait. Kiss. Wait. Yep, he went there, and here's how it went down. Singer Kirk J turned the chairs of all four judges, but his strong country roots convinced Adam to flip to Team Blake. Blake returned the love by planning not one, but two cheeky smooches on his front. How romantic. Cute baby alert! Alexis Ohanian Jr. is ready to vote. Serena Williams posted this pic on the gram, celebrating 10 million followers with her adorable mini-me. And have mercy. Billy Stamos is poolside, chilling with his papa on Insta. And it's pretty clear he already has his dad's slick moves. Baby on board for Kate Upton. The supermodel embraced the bump at hubby Justin's baseball game. Sporting all white as she cheered on from the stands. And rounding the bases, restored by the Fords, has one big room to fix up. A nursery. Leanne and Eric Ford are expecting their first child together in March. Leanne revealing she never imagined having kids until meeting her husband. Now with a little girl on the way and lots of love to give, she's ready for all the tears, laughter, and kisses to come. So happy for them. Stay with us. Alex and Nat Wolf are joining their real-life mom, Polly Draper, in Stella's last weekend. Mom plays alongside her sons in an awesome confess sesh. And a little hint here, Ryan Gosling does come up. Stick around for that. And guys, we are still swooning over Princess Eugenie's gorgeous wedding to Jack Brooksbank. We've been asking about your reactions to the ceremony and what you love most about royal weddings. Let's take a look at what you have been tweeting about. Yeah, let's see it. So Shay says, I love seeing the little kids. They're always so funny and adorable. Aaron, so <laughs> they really are. Aaron says, the fashion, it's great to see what everybody is wearing and the flowers, by the way. That's also right. That. Mm -hmm. Keep sending in those tweets. Now, watch this.
I'm always worried about girls liking you better, but she had the choice and she chose me. Could be awkward. Alex and Nat Wolf star alongside their real-life mom, Polly Draper, in Stella's Last Weekend. The movie, which Draper wrote and directed, is about two close brothers who fall for the same girl. So I had to ask if this was something that maybe had happened in real life. Take a look. We're really different personalities, so mostly it's usually like um, the girls who go for each one of us. Are, it's a very specific thing. It's like not different type. Yeah, completely. kind of different type of. Okay. Well, also it's like there's nobody who's more protective, you know, yeah. of each other. These characters were different. Are a little bit different. Yeah. 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 You know. And they're and they're younger. I'm just trying to think of when we were younger, but but they're they're definitely younger, and I think they represent a younger part of both of us. The thing that we do as brothers is be like. Talk. If somebody brings, we, we meet a girl, you know, that they bring over and, uh, you know, everybody's being kind of polite to them and Alex and me is like, no, this is not going to work, <clears throat> especially when we're younger, not yeah, anymore really, yeah. but when we were like in high school and, um, you know, Alex is like, I remember being really into this girl and, and I was like, this is not good news. And then I remember <laughs> I dated a girl in 10th grade that Alex is, just could not stand. He's like, I'm not going to be nice to her. I'm not going to be nice to her. <laughs> I, I That's it, like cold, cold, cold the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who's typically, is there one of the two of you that And then our other friends started dating her and I said, I'm still not going to be in it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so no lady competition for those two, but we did want to get to know the family a little more. So we put them to the test in a little People Now Confess Sesh. Speed round, watch. If I could pick one famous person to join our family, it would be... Airbud? <laughs> no way. I was hoping you would pick Ryan Gosling. Gosling. <laughs> that. That's different. But this, you guys were both on the Gosling train. This, again, this feeling. is. He wouldn't quite be my son <laughs> in <Yeah>. my mind. <laughs> of the three of us, who's most likely to bring up an awkward topic at a holiday family dinner? I think it would be me. <laughs> I think I could have answered that. I think just from this Alex would be a close second. Yeah. I wouldn't bring up an awkward topic. I'd bring up a controversial Let me just tell topic. you okay. one thing that Alex did at my nephew's wedding. Tread lightly, no. Might have to, <laughs> no, he might have I to I gave a lap that. dance to the gave a lap groom dance to the groom in front of everybody and nephew. then simulated oral sex in front of our entire family. <laughs> in front of all the wedding guests, <laughs> old people. Out of the three of us, who's most likely to lie about liking a birthday present? I mean, my mom it's likes like stuff if, you, if, you, if it's yeah. homemade. She likes stuff if it's you, homemade. You, you yeah. do, you'd make them feel good. Mom is like, I loved the bow on the wrap. <laughs> <laughs> like really looking for the optimistic the angle. I think I can't lie very well. She so... went out to somebody after a play that was really terrible in the play, and she goes, she's like complimenting somebody else in the play, and then she looked at her and said, you were up there, you were up there, you were up there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so great. Awesome. So we've got Stella's Last Weekend in theaters, and we've got even more people picks for you, including one of my favorite TV shows, Blackish. Take a look. I wasn't really feeling college right now. <gasps> yeah. Malia Obama took a gap year. You are not Malia Obama! I am actually currently in the midst of a gap year. Um, I will be attending USC fall 2019. I, I was deciding, I was like, you know, I want to take some time for work and just kind of like, you know, discover myself, man. <laughs> no. As an individual. As an individual. Oh, yeah. I really am. Travel the world. <laughs> Australia, yeah. here I come. I love him. It's always <laughs> such a blast when Marcus Scribner stops by people now. His show Blackish is heading into its fifth season this week. Plus, their 100th episode is quickly approaching. Can you believe it? I know, and right? there's a twist. It's going to be a musical. <laughs> so you definitely got to tune in for that. This is not the America that I know. Christopher, we said we're not talking politics. I'm not going to ruin Thanksgiving, I promise. Rest assured. You are Nazis! <laughs> the Oath is a political satire, meets thriller, meets comedy. It's all in there. It explores what might happen if the president asked Americans to sign an oath, pledging their loyalty to both him and the country. It's not mandatory, but after there are some riots, there are some disappearances, it becomes pretty clear you better sign it or else. What could go wrong? And on top of all that drama, it takes place the week of Thanksgiving, <laughs> one of the most stressful weeks of the year. Now, the movie really tackles both the liberal and conservative sides of opinion, so there's something in it for everybody. Now, Ike Barinholtz wrote, directed, and and stars in the movie. He's hilarious and he's stopped by people now. And apparently one very famous American has some very passionate opinions about the Thanksgiving dinner table. Watch. I think of Barack Obama at the Thanksgiving table. He's good. It's common. 
Uh, pass the stuff, please. Uh, and never, 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 never put raisins in your uh, stuff. Some people will put raisins in a stuffing, and nothing destroys a stuffing more than golden raisins. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. First Man is one of the most anticipated movies of the entire year, and it's finally here. Woo. Ryan Gosling steps into Neil Armstrong's NASA boots with ease, playing the first man to step on the moon in all his glory. But he's also showing us his quiet, intensely personal family man side as well. Yeah, he is. We all know that Armstrong's mission to the moon was successful, obviously, but Ryan and the movie's director, Damien Chazelle, make us feel like it is unfolding in real time. We are totally on board for this. It's stressful, it's uncertain. It's really a beautiful ride. And he's a beautiful man. <laughs> It's so powerful. Ryan even says the movie changed how he sees the moon every day. I think of it as, uh, you know, only three days away. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't help but think about now, you know, it's an it's incredible uh, shift in, in, in this thing that was once sort of unknowable. Well, guys, we can't leave without talking about Princess Eugenie's and Jack Brooks Banks' royal wedding one more time. Oh, indeed. And again, as we mentioned, the celebs. So many superstars, yeah. Were, yeah, superstars Look at the groom up. looking at the bride, okay? There's Kate and William. There's the gorgeous bride coming down the aisle. Absolutely gorgeous. I'm sure everyone was wowed by her dress. Oh, and look, let's look at Cara Delevingne. She's holding that top hat, and who do we have there? There's uh, Demi Moore, I believe. Oh, Kate Williams, okay, awesome. So, and we had uh, Cara Delevingne, Liv Tyler, Kate Moss among uh, the celebs that were coming. As Imogen mentioned earlier, uh, Eugenie used to live, Liv There's Tyler. There's Liv Tyler walking down in New York, exactly, Eugenie right? Eugenie used to live in New York, mm -hmm. and so she's actually friends with a lot of these celebs. Absolutely. Oh, there's Demi Moore wearing a gorgeous, blue, uh, is that purple? Yeah. Absolutely. And there's Naomi Campbell. The fascinators were down. All right. But what's a royal wedding without a royal cake? The Duke of York just shared photos on Twitter of the wedding cake. So it's a red velvet and chocolate cake. Nice. Yeah, it's designed by London bake baker Sophie Cabot and was inspired by the rich colors of fall. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. Guys, uh, we thank you so much for watching and enjoying all the royal festivities Indeed, today. Indeed, it was fun. Have, Have a great a weekend. Have a great weekend. Woo!